All right, guys, now today, you might be able to tell from the uh, rather fetching t-shirt and the machine next to me, today's video is gonna be all about the Commodore 64. Now, you know that I've done quite a lot of Amiga videos. Uh, probably the most requested subject matter after the Amiga uh, in my comments and inbox is Commodore 64 video. So today, I thought I'd show you my um, Commodore 64 setup. Now, I've showed you around my office in previous videos. I decided it was probably about time that we had a permanent home for the C64, so uh, it's set up here with a Philips 88332 monitor that I've uh, showed you in the past, I think, with a few um, nice little additions to it as well, in particular an SD card reader. Now, I thought in this video we'd talk about SD cards and the Commodore 64. Um, if maybe you've got the real hardware and you don't want to mess around loading tapes or finding the original floppy disks as, you know, five and a quarter inch floppy disk can be a little bit delicate. A lot of them are quite old these days. So I thought I'd talk you through the best ways to use uh, SD cards, download games and applications, and play them on your Commodore 64. So what we'll do is I'll bring you a little bit nearer and I'll give you a brief tour of my setup and then I'll uh, talk you through downloading software and using it on your machine. And there we are then, my original model, 1983 Commodore 64. Now, uh, there were a few different revisions of the Commodore 64 that were sold here in Europe. Uh, in particular, around 1987, Commodore redesigned this and put it in a white case and did a few um, cost reductions on the motherboard as well. Uh, but to me, if you talk about a Commodore 64, I'm picturing the original bread box model as its nickname now. Uh, the, the one that's in brown with these dark, you know, chocolatey colored keys. Uh, and you know the function keys down there as well. This kind of, you know, this is the design that I associate with the machine really. Uh, this is a 1983 model. Some of the early ones had some different colored keys there and also the logo changed a little bit, varying on your machine. Uh, but I didn't actually own a Commodore 64 back in the day. If you've seen my uh, video on my Commodore Plus 4, that was my first ever computer, but my, my brother did actually have a C64, as did my best friend, Sean back when I was about seven, eight years old. So I've been very familiar with the C64 for many years. So uh, I've got mine hooked up to a Philips CM88332 CRT monitor. It's only a 14 inch little video monitor. Apologies for the wavy black lines that are coming up and down the screen. Um, I know you can actually fix that by setting the camera to record in 30 frames per second mode. I've looked through all the settings on my camera. I can't for the life of me find it. So uh, maybe it doesn't have it, unfortunately. We have to deal with the black lines while I show you this for a minute. In real life though, it looks really sharp. Now the way I've got it hooked up to this monitor is with a little video cable that goes into the monitor port on the back of the 64. And then if we look around the back of the monitor, it's literally just um, composite. So, you know, the three different cables, two for audio, one for video. Um, there are probably cleaner ways you can display it. And I've actually got a, a SCART cable as well that I can hook into my flat screen, but for this, um, I think it looks perfectly good actually, you know, it's really sharp. You're not getting any interference on the screen or anything, so that's there. I've also got a, uh, a Competition Pro joystick. To me, you know, that is kind of the uh, the joystick I most associate with the C64. Uh, the tape deck down there, the data set that I'm not really using at the moment. I'll show you why in a minute. There's also an old uh, video recorder and DVD combo that I use on this monitor under there too. And uh, now the main subject of this video though is gonna be this little device. Isn't it cute? Uh, this is an SD card reader. Now the uh, model of this one is the SD2IEC. If we get close and check out the logo there. And as you can see, mine's in like a, a nice little case that makes it resemble the old Commodore 1541 floppy disk drive, only a lot smaller. You know, the 1541 was probably about half the size of that video I've got under there. And uh, now what this lets you do is use SD cards on your C64. So as you can see here, I've got a, a one gigabyte SD card in there, Panasonic model, which we'll take out for a minute. Um, it comes with a couple of buttons on the top here for changing discs. I'll show you a bit more about that later. And the way it jacks into the C64 is, um, it goes into the serial port on the back, and then you get another connector here that goes into the um, cassette drive port. The only reason for that is this one wire here that gives it the five volts of uh, power that it needs to power up the device itself, as uh, the floppy disk drives on the Commodore 64 back in the day had their own power supply, but you know, this doesn't need it. Now, I'll show you a bit about downloading ROMs, and then we'll we'll fire a few up on the C64, and I'll show you how they work. All right, now for uh, this bit of the video, I'm gonna be using my uh, Amiga 1 machine with Amiga OS 4.1, but obviously, 
this will work on any machine that's got an SD card reader or you can plug a USB one in. Pretty much any Mac, PC, you name it. Now, I plug the SD card in. As you can see, I've got it here. It's completely blank. Um, it's a gigabyte capacity mine. Nothing on it so far. So what we're going to do is download a file browser so we can um, browse the software a bit more easily on the Commodore 64 and also download a couple of games to it as well. So I'll open my web browser. Uh, if you go to Google, you want to search for CBM Browser. There we are. Um, now what this is, it's a program launcher that means rather than um, kind of treating it as a massive floppy disk and having to load everything through basic, you can get a nice program launcher for it instead for the, the games and software that you download on it. Now CBM File Browser works with pretty much any of the Commodore 64 SD card readers. Uh, it tells you here, you know, it uh, works with my model, the SD2 IEC, the MMC2 IEC. Uh, the Commodore 64, 15412, you know, all of the different variations of the SD card reader will probably work with this program just fine. And it also works with various Commodore 8-bit machines as well. Um, I think pretty much all of them by the looks of it. The uh, VIC-20, Commodore 16, you know, the 264 range, the Commodore 128, any of the popular ones anyway. So what we'll do, we'll go right down the bottom of the page. You get the latest version of it here, the CBM file browser, which I'll download quickly. Then we need to unzip it, so use your unzip program of choice. And then you'll be um, you'll find a directory called Programs in there. So if you open that, there are then different versions of the file browser for all of the Commodore machines. Now the version we want um, is FB64PRG, and obviously 16 is for the Commodore 16, 128 is for the 128. So what we do then is copy that one file over to the SD card. And what I'll do, I'll rename it because it's got a file extension, which the Commodore 64 is not really bothered about. So rather than it being called fb64.prg, we'll just call it fb64. Now what I'll do to keep the uh, SD card a bit tidier, we'll make a directory in there and we'll call that, for example, games. You might want one for like applications as well. And then go back to your web browser and you'll want to find a website where you can download some uh, Commodore 64 images. Now, one that I quite like is www.c64.com Now they actually have demos on here as well, games that are split up into alphabetical order. They also do their top 50 downloads of the week as well, which are quite nice. So, um, and I'm going to commit piracy on camera here. Hopefully none of these companies will chase me for downloading their 30 year old games. I think we'll actually try the Great Gianna Sisters. That was a game that was never really <laughs> available for mainstream sale. That might be a bit more lenient on me. So we'll click on the file, we'll download it. And then you'll see um, we've got a zip file in there, the great Gianna sisters d 64 So what we'll do is uh, we'll just copy, unzip that onto the, uh, onto the SD card into the games folder. There we go. So just copy that file into there. And there it is, it's in my games directory now. Now what you'll get is uh, when you're downloading software, off the internet for the C64. Uh, D64 files are disk images. Inside those you'll get you'll get what are called PRGs that are programs. So basically this is a it could be a collection of many files on a disk. So what we'll do now, just in, as an example, we've got that file in there, we've got the browser in there as well. We'll now transplant the SD card back into the Commodore 64 and uh, we'll load it up on there. Right then, now we're back on the Commodore 64. I will insert the SD card into the uh, SD card reader. There we go, it's in there now. Um, sometimes these little lights on the top will blink on mine, uh, but unless they're flashing red, you don't have to worry about it. One thing I've noticed, if you turn it on and they are flickering red, it's usually because you've got the uh, right protect tab the wrong way. For some reason it doesn't work at all like that, so make sure it's unprotected. Now it's in there, I can just treat it like a normal floppy disk. So if I type load, uh, quotation mark, dollar sign, quotation mark, uh, comma, eight, Press return. That's how you do a directory listing in Commodore Basic. And then it will have a quick look. Ready? We'll type list. It will show me the files on the disk. There we go. We've got FB64. Now that is a file browser. We've also got the games directory and everything in there as well. But we're going to use FB64 to load the games. Then we'll type load. Quotation mark FB64. Quotation mark comma eight comma one. I'll put these in annotations in the video description below. I mean, if you're a Commodore 64 user, you probably know your way around Commodore Basic anyway. Press return, that will then load up the File Browser 64 program. There we go, run. And as you can see here, we've now got kind of a graphical uh, menu that we can scroll up and down rather than having to type in commands. 
So we'll go up and down on the cursor key, or I could use my joystick as well to tap me up and down the list, as you can see. And we'll go into the uh, games. It tells you what they are there. That's a program, and that is a directory. That's games that we made before. Press on it, and there's a great Gianna Sisters. So we can go down. I've had a lot that all appear in this list as well. I can press on it, and then we get the files that are in there. So program file, program file. That's probably the main one because it's separated. We'll press on it. Now one thing I'll say about the SD card readers on the 64, they do kind of emulate the speed of a real disk drive as well. <laughs> probably limited to the uh, Commodore 64's very slow serial port by today's standards, so you know, you're not going to be loading up games in a couple of seconds. It can generally take a minute or two, as it would with uh, a real floppy disk drive if it was plugged into the machine. Alright, now we've got that kind of uh, funky 8-bit multi-colour cycling loading effect that you get on the uh, Commodore 64. Now that probably took around uh, 60 to 70 seconds for it to get this far, so I skipped forward in the video a little bit. Now hopefully the game should load. Right, by the looks of this we've got a, uh, a crack trow, as they're called. Um, should probably get past by hitting spacebar. Then we can hopefully get into the game. Uh, we've got a bit of documentation here, I'll skip through. And what appears to be a trainer, now you'll often get these in, you know, crack games, obviously. And um, that means I can have, like, unlimited lives or anything like that if I wanted to. Uh, reset the high scores. There we go, we're into the game. So, just better play that like a, a normal game that you would off a disc drive or a cassette tape. If you don't know this game, it's a kind of Super Mario Brothers ripoff for the Commodore 64. <laughs> that was the reason it never went on sale. Or if it did, it got took off the shelves very quickly. And that is how you use SD cards and download software onto your Commodore 64. I hope the video helped. If you've got any questions, leave a comment below. Uh, and you'll also find my Google Plus and my Twitter links if you want to follow me. And I have got a new website coming soon as well. There have been a lot of people asking me um, if I'm going to do any blogs or maybe get some kind of community website going for the, the uh, videos that I do. It is currently work in progress, so I'll let you know when that launches. Hopefully it won't be too long. And uh, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you again next time.